Hello and welcome everybody, I'm Madrybred and these are 7 great tips to improve at Thea the Awakening. 1. Look for nearby sources of spider silk early and consider spending your first research point on unlocking it. You can easily get tons of research points early game by making basic clothing entirely out of spider silk. It can also be combined with wicker, a common early game resource to create fantastic gathering tools or solid and lightweight early game bows. Things made with spider silk are also very light and are perfect for equipping on classes with low strength like your sages and medics. Lastly, spider silk will still retain usefulness in late game as it's a fantastic secondary ingredient for many of the best artifacts such as the diamond eye. For only 6 diamonds and 8 silk thread, you can get an artifact that gives you 4 attractiveness, 4 will, and 4 intelligence. Not only that, but it has a weight of 3 so you can easily give it to even your lowest of strength characters. 2. Rush dragon leather and make medium armor out of it. Not only does the armor you'll make weigh very little and give tons of armor, but it also gives the leech skill. The game massively overestimates how good leech is when figuring out auto battles, so by having tons of this armor you can easily auto battle strong enemies without taking any injuries. It also makes for a great secondary material in swords for keeping low strength characters incredibly safe between the swords, shield, and leech values. 3. Make buildings not only for their effectiveness, but also with the intention of attracting rare classes. Orcs, goblins, elves, dwarves, and demons are all very rare and powerful races to have join your village, and with the right buildings, you don't need to luck your way into an event to get them. Each race has associated resources that will attract them if you use high enough quantities in a building. There's a full chart on the wikia in the description if you need it, but steel for orcs, grain for humans, obsidian for goblins, elven wood for elves, gold for dwarves, and dragon bones for demons are the best ways to attract extra powerful classes you otherwise are unlikely to get. Also, make an archery range out of 80 monster bones and you'll get an insane 10 attract beasts stat and will be absolutely flooded with pet beasts. 4. Get high quality cabbage fields early to keep your population growing. One is fine, but you can always make two or three and remove the extras in late game. Specific resources to look for would be wheat and obsidian. Wheat can be gathered from the start of the game and it has the highest attract human stat, and obsidian would allow you to also attract goblins. Don't worry too much about the actual attract children stat of the cabbage fields early in the game. By the time you have great material unlocked, you'll probably already have a steady population. 5. Build a smithy before crafting any serious equipment, so that you have a chance of making better quality equipment. Every piece of equipment you make will have a chance of being better than expected, with a higher chance appearing with a better catalyst. But that bonus can't happen unless crafted in a town with a smithy. The smithy also makes children growing up to be craftsmen start with more skill points, as well as giving a bit of crafting skill to everyone in the village. Seeing as crafting can only be done in the village, this makes even your otherwise useless village guards into decent crafters and cooks. Don't worry too much about the quality of your smithy since the difference between a high quality and low quality smithy is very minor. I would focus on using resources that attract races you want, like obsidian for plus 4 attract goblin, or dragon bones for plus 2 attract demon. 6. In early games, swords are great for keeping villagers from dying due to less overall health. But as you move to mid and late game, you'll want to rely more on hammers for their amazing group damage. Blunt damage has an incredible carryover effect, where when an enemy dies due to a blunt strike, the leftover damage is carried on to the next enemy. This can turn an already powerful warrior into an absolute butcher that wipes out groups of enemies quickly. Using moonstones for a shiny skull crusher, you'll be able to get the highest quality warhammer, but ancient wood also will do a great job if you really need something lighter. 7. Find wicker and get tons of gathering tools. The amount of gathering you're going to do over the course of the whole game is pretty insane, so every item you can make to gather faster is going to help massively in your effort to make great equipment. The game gets harder the longer it's been going, so the sooner you gather the material to make amazing equipment, the longer the equipment will be effective for. 
Wicker with Leather or String will already give you a bonus of 3 Gathering. Plus 4 if you use Spider Silk, like I also recommend you get early game. In late game, you can easily upgrade to plus 5 by either mixing in Nimble Wood or Dragon Leather, and for the absolute best, you can get a plus 6 by using both Nimble Wood and Dragon Leather. If you want to watch more Thea the Awakening, I have a full playthrough of the game that I have done. I'll put a link on screen as well as in the description. Also, at the time of this video, Thea 2 The Shattering is in early access. Go support the game and pick it up on Steam. Let me know in the comments if you have any tips that you'd like to share. I'd love to have more feedback. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.